Hello and good Tuesday, February 2nd, 2010. I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. A lot of people have been asking about the Apple iPad, so I thought I would take the day to do a quick roundup of some of the more interesting issues that have cropped up. And if you didn't consider that one, you may have already heard that a lot of people think the iPad is a bit useless. Many programmers were quick to notice that the iPad comes with an iPhone operating system, not a full, robust operating system like the ones we're used to on our home computers. As a result, the iPad won't run professional applications like Photoshop and Final Cut Pro, and Apple maintains control over the approval and distribution of any application, no matter what it does. Others were quick to point out that there is no expandable memory, no expandable storage, no USB inputs, no phone, and no camera. So why? Cash. Take away the camera, the phone, the hardware needed for expandability, and you begin to significantly reduce your costs and get the device on the market for a competitive price. So while a lot of people are complaining, do you really think you need another camera or another phone? The iPad is not meant to replace your mobile because it's too big to fit in your pocket. And it's not meant to replace your computer because it doesn't have the kind of power and expandability most regular computer users need. So it's important to see this as something different. Apple wants this to be your third device. Using a desktop computer is typically a lean forward activity. Using an iPhone is typically an in transit activity. And now you have the iPad, which seems ideal for lean back reclined activity. In other words, couch potato computing. Chill in your oversized chair and read a book. Lay on the couch while interacting with Facebook. Index Wikipedia while watching an episode of Discovery Channel. Let your guests use it without needing to protect your personal data. Or use it to complete the latest Tiger Beat quiz to find out how compatible you are with Justin Bieber. Meanwhile, a much larger claim has been leveled against the iPad. The lack of Adobe's Flash support. Most video websites use Flash, and a large number of other websites use Flash for interactivity and special graphics. So many people feel it's a handicap and a crime for Apple to exclude Flash. But according to Steve Jobs, Flash is underdeveloped by Adobe, and thus is always causing the Mac to crash. And Adobe and Apple are not even in talks to make Flash work better on Apple products, like the iPhone, which also doesn't support Flash. But most importantly, also according to Jobs, HTML5 will soon replace the need for Flash, rendering Flash completely obsolete. HTML, the staple web programming language unchanged since 1999, has always lacked an ability to deal with conditionals, like if X happens, then do Y. HTML5 adds conditionals, and thus creates a more coherent and especially open standard. HTML5 is already happening, and with Jobs' comments last week about the subject, it's likely to pick up steam really quick. If you download the new Safari browser and beta, you'll find it has some HTML5 support. And if you go to youtube.com slash HTML5, you'll be able to view YouTube videos without a Flash player, which looks just like it does with a Flash player. It's essentially indistinguishable. So say goodbye to Flash, it's probably not going to last. If you have a website that uses Flash now, the sooner you're able to implement an HTML5 option, the sooner you will be compatible with the iPhones, iPods and iPads of the world. And if you have an iPhone and a Macintosh, you don't need an iPad, but you might want one for the family coffee table or just for chilling poolside. And at the end of the day, I'm going with two thumbs up on the Apple iPad once.